Like my mother said, if you're not having a good time, go home. Uh, today, uh, we we're fortunate to have one of the pioneers in alternative. Oh, wait a minute, are we ready? Yeah. Okay, uh, we're fortunate to have one of the pioneers in alternative medicine uh, here in Mexico and at the University of Guadalajara. Um, <coughs> this is Dr. Hector Solorzano, who is the program director of alternative medicine there. It, it's a unique uh, situation in that uh, even in Europe, and certainly the United States, they do not have uh, alternative medicine in the medical schools. And this program has been functioning for 10 years now, so they should be uh, commended and congratulated. I didn't even know about it until just a month or two ago. Uh, Dr. Solorzano, the floor is yours. Okay, okay I'm too small, I'm too short, so I have to move. <laughs> okay, good morning. Uh, I want to request you in advance uh, my mistakes because there are some words that I do not pronounce very well or words that I do not know if, it, if it's, uh, they are the same in English as they should be they should be translated. So if I make a mistake, excuse me. Disculpe, hay que... Ese es el... El remoto. El video. Ah, muy bien. Los dos todo el tiempo? Okay. Well, uh, Dr. Arana forgot uh, one thing, <laughs> very important. Uh, today I am his uh, guest and I thank you very much for this. But I'm also come with representation of my boss. My boss is the director, the general director of the University of Guadalajara. His name is Licenciado Raúl Padilla López. Um, and so I have to give you some uh, background of the University of Guadalajara. The University of Guadalajara, we have two universities in Guadalajara, big ones, and, only, and six or seven small ones, but two big ones. <laughs> Uh, the University of Guadalajara is the second largest official university in our country. So that means that it's a very important university. And as he said, uh, this university opened a program for studies of alternative medicine since uh, 10 years ago. Um, this was because we have uh, done some research, some basic, res uh, basic research and some clinical research. But now our main, um, main work is on clinical research. So we have had the opportunity to, to learn from many people around the world. We have invited uh, German doctors, uh, English doctors, American doctors, and many, many uh, uh, famous doctors to learn from them. So we have now <laughs> good experience, 10 years of good experience. Uh, the other thing is that um, some other universities, some other official universities in our country have also taken this, um, how do you say, daring, daring step because when we began this program, uh, my chief work uh, very severely criticized <laughs> by the other uh, universities because they, they tell him, you are crazy, uh, this is not a good thing to do, you have to stop it. But he didn't, you know, he's a very open-minded uh, person. He's not an American doctor, he's a, he's a, um, how do you say, a lawyer. So he knew that not only in politics, we have to be open, we have to have uh, pluralism, but also in medicine. So he decided to, to go on. So that's why I'm still here. <laughs> uh, after two years uh, that we began our program, the National University of Mexico, which is bigger than ours, also decided to open, not a program, but to open certain, uh, uh, certain courses, postgraduate courses. Uh, for example, in acupuncture, I was invited to organize this first uh, postgraduate, congress, uh, postgraduate course in acupuncture uh, about eight years ago. And then now we have uh, several universities, official universities in our country that are offering uh, postgraduate courses in different alternative medicines. They, do have a, they don't have a program, they don't have a department especially designed to make research uh, and, and do diffusion, to do uh, 
uh, for example, to write books or uh, booklets and so on, but they do have uh, s courses or seminars. For example, the Autonomous University in Puebla, the Autonomous University in uh, Veracruz, uh, the Autonomous University in, in Chihuahua, and uh, mm, one big uh, university which is called the Instituto Politecnico Nacional also offers now uh, postgraduate courses in acupuncture, homeopathy, and some other uh, alternative medicines. And let me tell you something. Tomorrow, no, not tomorrow, but next Monday, uh, the President Salinas and the Minister of Health, Dr. Kumate Rodriguez, will receive a, um, an, a recognition by the group of the main alternative doctors in Mexico City. If they are accepting this, it's because they accept they have contributed to the development of alternative medicines in our country. And I think this is a very great step in our country because, you know, since NAFTA uh, began in January the, the 1st this year, the FDA has uh, power, legal power, to act uh, in within our country, 75 miles the border. So that's why many clinics have disappeared already. Uh, we are far away, so <laughs> we are lucky. <laughs> uh, but this is something very, very important. Um, so we must be prepared. That's why all the alternative medicines in our country have requested President Salinas and Kumate to to read again this, uh, this treaty to see what we are going to do because it seems that in five years uh, the FDA will be very powerful in our country and we don't want that <laughs> so we are fighting <laughs> thank you <laughs> okay so the message is very short from my, my boss is welcome to Nayarit because this is Nayarit in 10 blocks, uh, 10 kilometers is Jalisco, <laughs> but here is Nayarit. So welcome to Mexico, welcome to Nayarit. And my boss wishes you all success in this seminar. Okay, let me give you uh, a little bit uh, of my, by my background. I am a medical doctor. I also study the postgraduate course in homeopathy. I also study acupuncture in China. And I also studied uh, neural therapy in Germany. And I also studied the fall machine uh, in Germany. And I have studied some other things like this. <laughs> uh, I have written uh, some books. There are three books in, uh, uh, in enzyme therapy. I brought one here. And I have written some uh, other books on twin massage, acupuncture, and homeopathy, and many other uh, booklets, booklets from our seminars or congresses or small courses. Um, uh, <coughs> I am a professor of pharmacology at the University of Guadalajara, uh, and I also teach something very strange. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the, in the School of Medicine, uh, the, the, the chief, the director of the School of Medicine doesn't like <laughs> alternative medicines. But I am a postgraduate professor of a, of a, cl of a class so-called um, traditional uh, practices. So I don't understand how when you are in the, the pre-graduated course, they tell you that alternative medicine don't work. But when you go to the postgraduate course, they even give you a class, <laughs> so-called traditional practices. And in this class, what I teach is uh, acupuncture, uh, iris diagnosis, and things like that. So that's it's very strange, but it's uh, true. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, today I would like to speak about the enzymes. To speak about the enzymes is a very big... Uh, very big area because there are so many many uh, enzymes so I will try to be very uh, specific and I hope you understand what I am trying to tell you <coughs> the first thing is that uh, life is not possible without enzymes you know for microscopic and for microscopic organism for plants for animals and for our own uh, life enzymes are essential so we can live. If we don't have enzymes, no possibility of any kind of life. Let me use my 
my my uh, notes here. Give me what I open. This is my eraser. <laughs> okay. Uh, to have notes is very good because otherwise we can lose and 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 lose the track of what we are speaking. All right. All right. Okay. <coughs> okay. So. The right word to speak about enzymes, I mean the field that studies enzyme is systemic enzyme therapy. Systemic enzyme therapy. This means that the, the enzymes are going, are absorbed and they go all over through our body. Otherwise, you can give local therapy. And that is uh, another thing, because you are using only topical enzymes. Well, enzymes were known since many thousand years ago, but of course they didn't know that they have discovered enzymes. For example, the Egyptians uh, and the Arabians uh, noticed that if they had, for example, milk for some time left there, then it became cheese, right? Cheese it suffer a transformation. If, if they left there, for example, uh, how do you say, mass, I don't know how the word in English, but maybe mass, it became in bread, right? Do you understand? <laughs> okay, and so on. Dough. D-O-U-G-H. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And so, there are other things that became something else. So they found that there was something, a mysterious uh, force that made to convert one thing in another. They didn't know about, uh, they didn't know what it was, but they know something was there that made this thing happen. And so they, uh, they even uh, believed that if you take uh, all these kind of uh, things, you can live longer, you can have good health. And they notice this. That's why you know yogurt is very good. You know uh, beer is good, and all this kind of food, fermented food, is that right? Fermented food are good for health. <coughs> then the time passed, and uh, new people began to try to find out what was happening. And then we have a, a doctor, a very famous doctor, so called Reamur. Reamur. Re and uh, this was in the years of mm, 18th and so about it. This man tried to demonstrate that the digestion was not because of a mechanical uh, mechanism in the stomach, but it was because of the action of certain things that they didn't know what it was. So what we do, what he did is to make an experiment. What he did is he, uh, he invented a kind of uh, metallic capsule and then put a sponge in it, a sponge in it, and then gave it to an animal. And then he took this capsule uh, when it was eliminated by the animal. So what he did, <coughs> he saw that in this capsule with holes, big holes in it, and then the sponge in it, he found that the sponge was not, uh, no, not the sponge, I'm sorry, uh, it was meat in it. And when the capsule was released, he saw that there was no meat in it, no meat in it, okay? So he discovered and he demonstrated that meat was destroyed without being mechanically uh, pressure pressed or something like that. And then he discovered that there was something else something maybe a liquid or any other things. Now we know it's the uh, gastric juices and so on. Then the time passed and another man, so-called Spallanzani, Spallanzani, uh, he then made what I told you already. Instead of putting meat in it, what he put was an sponge. And when this uh, capsule was uh, released by the animal, uh, he took this sponge with these juices and then he put it in on meat, and then he saw the effect, the uh, destruction, the degra degradation, is that right? De degradation 
of the proteins. So he demonstrated that uh, the enzymes, of course, now we know, the enzymes are the best degraders of proteins. Many doctors still believe that what uh, makes the digestion is the um, HCL, HCL, but this is not. The HCL is only the activator of the uh, enzymes. In this case, the enzymes which is activated is the pepsin. Pepsin. Okay. Because pepsin does have the degraded effect, I mean the destroyer effect of the mucus of the uh, lining of the stomach, but not the acid, the hydrochloric acid. Okay. <coughs> um, well, enzymes in reality are the same thing as ferments, ferments like uh, Pasteur discovered many years ago. The difference. <laughs> well, I think I need some water. <laughs> we don't have eraser, so I'm sorry. Better than nothing. <laughs> Any more? Okay. Enzymes. Enzymes. Is <laughs> okay, let me see if this is uh, weaker. Okay. I will try this one. <laughs> Okay, so uh, ferments is because I because I put it close here or what? Oh, the speaker. Where is it? In the ceiling. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> so, uh, ferments are very similar to enzymes. They are the same thing. The difference between one is that the ferments. Um, they uh, act uh, inside, uh, outside the cells, and the enzymes act inside the cells. But in reality, they are the same thing. Okay. Um, one of the uh, one of the pioneers in discovering of the enzymes was Dr. Cuny. Cuny, 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 K U E N N E. <laughs> so, um, this is very important because now, after so many years, we know many, many uh, uh, more enzymes than in the past. For example, in, 19, eight, in 1930, we only knew 80 enzymes. And now, in 1994, we know more than 3,000 enzymes. So, the important thing here is that we don't know how many enzymes are left to be discovered. It could be five, but it could be 1,000. So <laughs> nobody knows. That's the important thing. We have to, to, to wait and see. OK. <coughs> mm. OK, so now I will begin to speak about what, are, what the enzymes are. I think you don't see anything, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, it's okay. I think I better don't write because you don't see anything. <laughs> you see? Okay, okay. <laughs> Let me see if it still works, this eraser. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> No, I think I need I need more more water. It's okay. Well, I better speak. Here we go. You can just throw it in there. All right. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Another one. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I will use this machine instead. Okay. <coughs> So 
So the first question is, what are they? What are the enzymes? Well, in a, in a word, we can say that enzymes are um, catalysts. And what is a catalyst? A catalyst is any, any substance that has the ability to accelerate a reaction between uh, some elements. Uh, without this uh, element, without the enzymes, there, uh, there is no possibility that these substances react between, within them. Okay, so that's what an enzyme is, it's a catalyst. So you have to know that there are kind, two kinds of catalysts, organic and inorganic. When you use your, your, uh, this uh, little bottle in your gasoline, there is a catalyst. Of course, this is an organic, an inorganic catalyst, but it's a catalyst anyway. Okay, so we are speaking about biocatalysts because they are working inside our body. They are organic biocatalysts. Uh, <coughs> we can say also that a catalyst is a su substance that has the ability uh, to produce a big effect with a small effort. That means uh, I, wa I want to uh, make a <laughs> very f uh, familiar uh, compar comparison. If you take, for example, a needle and then you prick uh, a horse prick on the back, woof, it will run <laughs> widely. And this is only one thing without m much strength that you can do. But the effect will remain a long time. I don't know how long time it will take for the horse to get calm again. <laughs> but it takes a long time. Okay, so this is what the enzyme do. They make a big uh, effect. <coughs> So enzymes are macromolecules. That means that this, his weight, their weight is more than 1,000 atoms per molecule. Uh, enzymes are, of course, uh, biologically and uh, very active, and enzym uh, enzymatically and catalyt catalytically very active. <laughs> catalytically very active because. 95% uh, of all the reactions in our body are, uh, uh, how do you say, the contrary of anabolic is catabolic. So 95% of our, in our reactions in our body are catalytic. And only five to uh, three to five percent are synthetical uh, reactions in our body. <coughs> okay. Uh, uh, since our enzymes are protein uh, bodies, enzymes are protein bodies, uh, that, that means that they are made up uh, amino acids. So you know we have uh, tw uh, 20 amino acids and they mix in different ways and that makes all these different uh, enzymes in our body. Uh, uh, one feature of the enzymes is that they are specific for the substratum. The substratum is uh, the place, the tissue, where they will react. So it's like a key. You know, one key will open only one door, and it's a specific for one, for one door. So it's the same thing with the enzymes. They are very specific for each uh, substratum. OK. <coughs> this is what they are. Now we will see. There are many kinds of enzymes. Of course, I will not tell you all of them because it would take a long time. So I will tell you that uh, the main enzymes that we use in medicine to, to help diseases, to help, for example, inflammations, to help uh, uh, MS patients, to help uh, to eliminate metals from the body and so on, are what we call the hydrolas. Hydrolas, I don't know. <laughs> Hydrolase. These enzymes have the ability to uh, um, degrade big molecules. But the feature here is that it, th these enzymes they always place a new molecule of water. Always they need to place water so they can destroy these uh, big molecules. Okay, that's why it's called uh, hydrolase. <coughs> Okay, now, the enzymes, they, as I said already, they act all the time. Without enzymes, we cannot think, without enzymes, we cannot feel, and we can do anything. Enzymes are uh, the programmers, they are um, 
they give us uh, the program up for uh, we can think because they work in a certain uh, order. Okay, but if we want all our thousands of enzymes uh, work in a very efficient way, we also need some helpers of them. These helpers are called uh, coenzymes. And many of you could think that uh, don't know what the coenzymes are, but I'm sure you already know. The coenzymes are the trace elements, the vitamins, and the uh, minerals. These are the coenzymes. So when we have a deficiency of the coenzymes, our enzymes won't work well too. So we have to take this very important into consideration. Because when we finish this small talk uh, and, I, and you will learn that you can heal certain diseases with these certain enzymes, if you don't get this effect, please, before you think that I'm wrong, <laughs> you must be sure that your patient has the normal levels of all the coenzymes. Minerals, trace elements and vitamins. Okay, this is very important. When we have a deficiency of any enzymes, of course we can have a specific problem, a specific clinical condition. The same thing happens with the vitamins, but with vitamins, since vitamins are very uh, well known all over, you know that, for example, a deficiency of vitamin B1, you would have a very, very, if you have a, a deficiency of vitamin C, you will have scurvy and so on. The same thing happens with the enzymes. But the problem here is that the deficiency of a certain enzyme does not have a, a specific name. So you can have uh, a deficiency of a certain enzymes, and you can have the symptoms, for example, of a MS disease, or you can have a arthritis or lupus or something like that. But the problem is the deficiency of certain or various or several enzymes in your body. So this is very important to take into consideration. <coughs> Now, the difference between an enzyme and coenzyme. The difference is very simple. Coenzymes can be used and reused again and again, but the, co the, enzyme, the coenzymes not. I mean, a coenzyme is a vitamin, for example, and the vitamin is uh, al already spent. Is that right? Spent? Used up. Okay. How do you say? Used up. Used up. Okay. Spended. Spended. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. Okay, so when you use a uh, uh, coenzyme, a vitamin, then you cannot use it anymore. It disappears, okay? And when you use an, a coenzyme, you can use it again and again, because it takes time to be destroyed. There are enzymes that can live 20 minutes, but there are other enzymes that can live even one month. It takes time to be destroyed, because it can use and reuse again and again. Now, um, so that the enzymes can work, they have to have certain uh, conditions, optimum conditions. For example, certain temperature, center, certain, certain uh, pH, and certain substratum, or I already said. So if you don't have these conditions, then enzymes won't work efficiently. There are enzymes that are very slow when, they're, when they are acting, for example, the, I don't know how to pronounce, so I will write it down. <laughs> Maybe lysozyme, I don't know how you say. Lysozyme, is that right? Lysozyme. Lysozyme? Lysozyme? Okay. Lysozyme. Okay. Lysozyme is an enzyme that is necessary to eliminate bacteria. So this, uh, this enzyme works only 30 times a minute. I mean, it destroys 30 molecules in the substratum uh, 30 times in a minute. That means one every two seconds. That is the slowest enzyme that we know so far. And the, uh, the fastest enzyme that we know is called uh, well, <laughs> carbo and hydras, is that right? Okay. This is the fastest enzyme we know. This enzyme works uh, or acts 36 million times in a minute. So you can see the difference between one and the other is so big. 30 times to, six to, to 36 million times is <laughs> very much. Of course, it's very important to notice here that the speed doesn't mean the intensity. 
because there are enzymes that uh, work very fast, but they can only make small effects. So sometimes it's the same thing because you do it very slowly, or you can do it uh, very very fast, but taking only a few uh, a few grams for the, to say familiarly. But the important thing is that speed is not the same as intensity. Okay. Okay. Now. <coughs> One uh, very, very important feature of the enzymes is that they work in what we call the cascades. Cascades. And the reason, you know, in nature, everything has a reason. Uh, the problem is that most of the scientists or medical doctors, when they don't find the reason why, they say that nature is wrong. It is in our, uh, at least in our country, that's very frequent. <laughs> okay, so we have found only two reasons why uh, enzymes work in cascades. I think there are many, many more, but we only have we only know two. You know, in, for example, coagulation. It is produced because of the cascade of these uh, factors in coagulation. You know, the immune system also acts with this uh, cascade and so on. Everything in our body is because of these enzymatic uh, cascades. So the first reason why they're, they're the enzymes act in a cascade is, the first one is security. <coughs> and the second one is uh, to save energy. <coughs> okay. Because the work has been divided in parts, it is easier to be performed. So that's why enzymes are doing each a little bit of the work. Now, it is so important to avoid the, uh, I mean, to, uh, to avoid dangers in our body that the enzymes have two to two uh, lock systems. In the security systems, we have two, two ways, two lock systems. I don't know, is that right? Lock system is okay? Okay. <laughs> and the first one is done because of the inactivation. Enzymes are inactive. These 3,000 and more are inactive in our body. Why? You know, let's suppose that uh, you uh, <coughs> trigger the enzymatic escape of coagulation. What will happen? You will have an uh, intravascular syndrome of coagulation. So people will die if he has this syndrome. That's why it's very important that, that blood does not coagulate. But also it's very important that blood coagulates when you get a cut. So you have to always be in the middle and have all these uh, enzymes running around your body. So whenever they are needed, you have them right away. And then the cascade is triggered. Okay, so all the enzymes in our body are inactive. And that's what's happened with the case of the, we saw already, the digestion. You know, pepsin is not active. So that's why pepsin does not produce ulcers and so on. Okay. Um, also, we will see it later. If, for example, our immune system is triggered, then our body can attack. And if it doesn't found uh, an invader, what we will attack? It will attack itself. So that's why it's very important that, uh, that our body has this security system, having the inactive uh, enzymes. And the second security system is produced by what we call the physiological uh, enzymatic inhibitors. Physiological enzymatic inhibitors. <coughs> this, uh, these inhibitors, uh, as the name says, uh, avoid that when our body has has produced many of these enzymes or or the problem has finished then our body has to stop it that's why it is physiological and uh, en enzymatic inhibitor for example in the case of inflammation there comes a time and we don't need inflammation anymore so the body itself will stop it but if there is a time that we need the inflammation inflammation is good for our body okay now the scientists in the pharmaceutical uh, industry had, have uh, made use of this knowledge. So I can tell you that maybe 99% of all our uh, allopathic orthodox medicines are made using this knowledge. I mean, 
that 99 of all the allopathic medicines are inhibitors. That means that means that they are only inhibiting our physiological reaction, and that is not good for our body because they are they are um, destroying the order in 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 our body. You know, the, there are a new word in medicine to 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 name these uh, agents, and the, and the name of this uh, and the, and the word used for these these things is uh, biological uh, no. Uh, yes, biological response modifiers. That's the name of the new agents. A biological response modifiers is any substance that will not inhibit or will not promote any specific reaction of our body. What this substance will do is just to uh, stimulate our body mechanisms and then the body itself will decide what to do. It will not change it. If, if I take for example uh, <coughs> anything, I mean whatever, what I can say, <laughs> because I don't use anything. Uh, for example, an aspirin or whatever, what it will do? It will inhibit certain enzymes, and the inhibition of these enzymes is not normal. I mean, this is not normal, so that means that it's interfering with my own mechanisms. And all these biological response modifiers are natural substances that will stimulate our own body, but the body will not be interfered. It will act at any way it wants. All right, there is a very famous um, there is a very famous um, uh, medicine so called homotoxicology. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Yes, most of you. Okay, <laughs> okay. You know, in homotoxicology, they teach us that there are six phases of the diseases, and then if you get more than to the uh, the first phase is uh, two phases. The first phase is the uh, humoral phase and the other phase is the tissues, is tissue phase. But in the humoral phase we have three uh, small phases. The reaction phase, and the excretion phase, the reaction phase and the um, um, deposit f the deposition phase. This is the three phases within the humoral. Then after this means that you will get that cell uh, uh, destructions, that you won't be the same although you get uh, better in your disease. So that was very, it is very important not to inhibit our body. If you know, if you have, for example, tonsillitis, what the doctor will give you is an anti-inflammatory to avoid inflammation. He will give you an analgesic for the pain. He will give you antibiotic for infection and so on. All the anti, anti-something, that means that they are only suppressing, they are not helping your body. So it is very important not to suppress, but to uh, stimulate, to promote health. It doesn't matter if we don't agree with our body reaction. The important thing is to let our body do what he has to do. You know, in, in allopathic medicines, what they told us, what they teach us is to, to to inhibit everything. It seems like it seems to me that they think that nature is a stupid because everything she does is wrong. <laughs> to have fever, to have uh, diarrhea, to have uh, to have an inflammation, anything is wrong. So we have to think twice before we prescribe an anti-inflammatory or an anti-anti-anything, okay? So, <clears throat> okay, well, one of the most famous medicine in the world is also an inhibitor. This is the aspirin, as I, as I already said, and the aspirin is only an inhibitor of an enzyme, so-called so cyclo, well, I, I better write it down. <laughs> Cyclooxygenase. How do you say? Cyclooxygenase. Cyclooxygenase. Okay. So this is what aspirin is only an inhibitor of this enzyme. That's why we think it works. <laughs> okay. <coughs> um, okay. Let me. I will jump many things. I will try to be direct to the point. Okay, enzymes are good for many, many things. Uh, we, can, we can make a summary that enzymes are good for three main things in medicine. The first one is for analysis. Analysis. The second one is for pharmaceutic industry. Pharmaceutic. And the third one is for therapy. 
Okay. Analysis. You know already that uh, in the past when we have to make, a, for example, a diagnosis of diabetes and we took blood from our patient, we have to do, we have to do many uh, reactions so we can get to the uh, level of uh, glucose in the patient's blood. Um, now we have all these uh, tapes that it takes only 60 minutes to know the, uh, the blood levels. Okay. <laughs> so, if we have 3,000 and more enzymes in our body, that means that we can make at least 3,000 different uh, blood tests to see for uh, to look for a disease or to look for any uh, imbalance in our body. So, enzymes are very important in analysis and diagnosis of our patients. The second one is in the pharmaceutical industry. Enzymes are are, are very good for the pharmaceutical uh, industry because most of the medicines that are produced today are produced using enzymes. Enzymes can transform, transform one thing to another, as we already said. Enzymes can uh, be used to produce things that in the past we could not have. For example, uh, uh, right now we know that there are about uh, 130 million diabetic in the world who need everyday insulin. And this insulin, uh, it is supposed to be human insulin. But it's not. What they use, what they have, what they use is they take um, an insulin from the animal that is very similar to us, the pork. Is that right? Pork. <laughs> okay. So what they do is to, they take uh, six uh, six tons of um, insulin from the porks, and then they mix this insulin with an enzyme. And what this enzyme does is to convert the uh, enzyme from the pork into uh, human uh, insulin because this enzyme only split certain uh, molecules from the ins from the pork insulin and then make it equal to the uh, human insulin so this is very important because otherwise many people would die not having his insulin daily okay and the last one is therapy uh, in the beginning uh, enzymes were used only for uh, enzymatic deficiency. Here I want to tell you that uh, enzyme, the genes are, only, are also enzymes. Each gene, gene? gene. <laughs> is also an enzyme. So all the genetic uh, uh, diseases are also enzymatic diseases. So in the beginning the enzymes were used only for genetic diseases. They were trying to uh, compensate uh, the lack of this enzyme and of course you know there are many they are they are extremely different because there are there are enzymatic defects that are not very how do you say that they, they are very uh, remarkable I mean you don't notice that someone has a obvious. obvious okay thank you <laughs> they are not obvious but there are enzymatic defects that you cannot live with them I mean some children mm, get born and then after a few minutes they die because of this enzymatic defect. So it depends on which uh, enzymatic problem you have. Maybe you can live, maybe you cannot. And then we know, how, at least we know about 150 different enzymatic diseases. So in some of them we can use enzymes to help these people to live a better and longer life. <coughs> Uh, we already know, for example, that in the, um, in the black race they have certain diseases, for example, the uh, falciform uh, anemia, which is common in, in the black people, and this is because they have a lack of certain enzymes. You know, the Japanese, they are very, uh, how do you say, prone to get drunk if they take alcohol, because they lack of enzymes, so called the aldehyde, uh, the aldehyde, um, aldehyde carbo... <laughs> Okay, you know the name. I know the name in Spanish, but <laughs> in English. Okay? And there are many other things that we could speak about that are produced because of these enzymatic defects. Okay. <laughs> um, now, let me tell you that enzymes are also important in digestion. It doesn't matter what we eat, if it's junk food or if it's healthy food. Uh, we can say that all the foods can be divided in three groups fats, carbohydrates and fat and it is so important to know that um, 
there are bad uh, food and good food that, for example, our body takes twice the time to, the, the, to degrade the fat foods. So we have to take this into account. And we have, we have also had the opportunity to see that the enzymes are released in certain order. That means, you know, I know very natural doctors that they say that you have to take first, for example, uh, the proteins and others say that you have to take first the carbohydrates. And some, sometimes they don't get agree. They don't agree because one thing and they say the other. But we have seen that the first enzymes to destroy uh, food, the first one released is those enzymes to degrade uh, carbohydrates, the, the amylolase, amylase, amylase, all right? Is that right? Amylase? Amylase. Amylase, all right. In the second place, we have the protease, and in the last place, we have the li 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 lipase. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, one thing, one important thing that I have to say here is that enzymes are not only good to digest food, but they are also good for the absorption of the food. So we need enzymes to absorb our nutrients. If we don't have uh, sufficient enzymes, we won't absorb. We won't absorb our foods, our nutrients. The other thing is that enzymes are also necessary for the transportation of these nutrients. Once they get into this uh, filly, is that the way you call it in English? Filly? The, 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 the filly in the intestine, in the small intestine? The villi. Villi. Villi? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so uh, when they pass through this villi, you have to transport it to the bloodstream. That's uh, very, very important. And enzymes has a very important role doing this. So we can uh, always recommend our patients to include uh, fresh food, fresh vegetables, which are those that contain a lot of uh, these enzymes. You must remember that enzymes are very sensitive to heat. So whatever you, uh, whenever you get a heat of uh, 60, well, some of them are very resistant to heat, but some of them are not. S but uh, the main, the, the mean, mean is the medium. The medium is 60, 60 centigrade is what they can stand. If you hit anything more than this, then all the enzymes will be destroyed. So that's why it's so important to teach the people, to teach our patients that when they cook the, the meals, they do not hit so much. Otherwise, they will destroy their food be before they eat it. <coughs> okay. Okay. We can say something that could be for you may, may very that it could be, it could seem to you very uh, daring. But whatever we are suffering of, I mean, if we have an inflammation, we have cancer, we have anything, it doesn't matter what, we can say that we have uh, an, an imbalance with our enzymes. Let me tell you why. Because when we have a disease, when we are suffering from a disease, our need for uh, enzymes will increase. We will need much more many more enzymes that we do than the, what we do when we are normal, when we are healthy. So whatever we get, we need an increasing number and uh, amount of enzymes. So what the enzymes do, they, are, they do many things, but what, what they do in summary, we can say they fortify, they fortify our mechanisms of defense. What they do is they accelerate the, uh, the wound healing. They also avoid or regulate the production of a, no of a normal, of a normal <laughs> cells. I mean, they avoid the production of, an, of a normal cells. And they also uh, help us in the uh, smoothly uh, circulation. Because one of the main actions of the enzymes are to uh, have, they have an, a fibrinolytic effect. Is that right, fibrinolytic? That means that they destroy the fibrin, and when they destroy the fibrin, they uh, make impossible to have a, bl a, s a dense blood. Is dense blood, is that right? Yeah. Blood cut, okay. They avoid a blood cut too, yes. Okay, so where we can find all these symptoms? Where we can find a patient that has a wound that doesn't heal? Where we can find a patient that has a, a immune system depression? 
you know the chronic diseases so enzymes are good in for all chronic diseases to help this uh, to help our bodies to recover okay in the in in the ancient times in ancient times for example in mexico the mayans and the aztec they used a lot of uh, papaya to heal the wounds they also use uh, the the leaves of the fig tree the fig is that right fig to, to they put it in in on the wound to help it to heal faster so it is very very known here in our country the use of these uh, natural enzymes <coughs> okay well let me see <laughs> time passes so fast okay well let me tell you just a few I don't want to jump uh, important things let me tell you that we have uh, studied the enzymes the uh, toxicity uh, one of the things that uh, the Ministry of Health asks when you are have to when you are going to register a medicine that contains uh, anything, you have to demonstrate that no toxicity, or you have to have what they call the DL50, which means that 50 animals will die with this high uh, dose, right? So we did this. We give uh, we gave to horses 250 tablets of different enzymes, and no one dies no one got sick then what we have to do is to use the small animals so we gave to rats uh, the equivalent to 2500 uh, tablets of the different enzymes and no one dies either so we didn't find the l50 <laughs> there is no dl50 if you try to go higher than this then it's not a problem of uh, toxicity but it's a problem of space there's no room enough to take so many <laughs> <laughs> so you cannot die because of toxicity at enzymes <laughs> okay okay oh uh, now we have only two true two true uh, contraindications of enzymes the first one is in, in hemophilic patients because as I told you most of the enzymes have this fibrinolytic effect so if you have an hemophilic patient then you can have him uh, bleeding and the other thing is if you have a if you are going to have a patient under surgery then you have to see if he has not a what we call diatesis di di how you pronounce diatesis 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 mean to pre prone yes. to be prone to hemorrhage right mm -hmm. if you are going to have a patient for example if you are going to have a, a tooth out before you do that you have to be to be sure that this patient does not have this prone to bleed he's not prone to bleed the, the right name is diatesis right diatesis to bleed okay that's the only thing now here is very important to see that enzymes uh, have different effects what we call synergy synergy right synergy 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 okay synergy okay we have seen that between them for example if you use papain papain has uh, an effect factor for example of one and if you take for example uh, bromelin bromelin also has an effector effect of one uh, but if you combine them the two two together then it will not give two it will give you four so this is a very important synergy that we have seen between the enzymes so that's why most of the uh, commercial formulas have many enzymes because what we have to do is to have a, an enzymatic cascade if you don't have an enzymatic cascade then the result will not be very uh, wonderful it will be only a mild effect okay so it's very important to combine the enzymes to have this big effect um, so this is an effect when they are put together but the enzymes also have a synergetic effect when you combine it for example if you are still uh, prescribing as an orthodox uh, doctor then you can reduce for example the uh, amount of uh, antibiotic if you are combining with enzymes or you can reduce the effect we have uh, we have done some studies comparing the dose necessary for example to have an in inhibition of the cancer of the cancer cells growth and we have seen that with certain cytostatic um, agents we can reduce from 11 percent to 40 percent so this is very important because uh, what we try to use less 
amounts of chemotherapy, we can reduce this to 40%. Of course, uh, on the orthodox medicine, it happens exactly the contrary, because what they do is they, then they see that they can use much more, maybe the double. <laughs> so it's a different uh, way to take it. But the important thing is that you can get the same effect reducing the dose to, uh, to uh, the maximum of 40%. It's almost half. Okay. <coughs> um, okay. Okay. So I think we should talk about uh, one one important thing. Well, I think I better ask you. What would you like to hear about? Let me tell you. I, we can speak about if you want about the autoimmune diseases. We can speak about the inflammation, or we can. Uh, talk about uh, other diseases that enzymes are good for, but I exactly don't know what are you. Uh, what would you like the most? And we have still only twenty minutes. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we will speak about the autoimmune diseases. All right. Okay. And then you know that we have an immune system, and the immune system is in charge of healing our body. So that means that the doctors, antibiotics, and everything else does not heal our body. The body heals itself, okay? Don't forget that. Okay, so whatever gets in our body, it doesn't matter if it's a particle of a metal, if it is a, a bacteria, a fungus, or whatever, we call it an antigen. The antigen is the invader of our body. And of course, our body always reacts, producing something. In this case, what the body produces is the antibody. Okay. When this, when these two, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> when these two are placed together, I mean, when the antibody uh, destroys the antigen, they together form what we call the immune complex. Okay, the immune complex is the union of these two uh, molecules. And after this, uh, this immune complex is uh, produced, then normally macrophages will come and they will destroy these immune complexes. But unfortunately, this frequently uh, does not happen because of what we, are, we have already seen, because we are regularly uh, prescribed with uh, anti-inflammatories, with antibiotics, and so on. So our, macrophage, our macrophage <laughs> macrophages are not active all the, uh, as we would like to be, uh, as active as we would like to be. Uh, let me tell you that even certain foods inhibit the action of microwave of macrophages. So that's why it's very important to not inhibit our bodies. Okay. So this means that in a, in an average person, the immune <coughs> immune complexes will arise abnormally. This is not normal. Abnormally, they will arise, but they will not be uh, destroyed as they should be. So that means that they are circulating all over our body. And when they get in certain small b blood vessels, like the capillary or other uh, vessels, they will get stuck. They will be. They will stay there. They will not move. So they will. They will go inside. How do you say? They will trans transfer. There is. You know. They will extravasculate. Right. They will extravasculate to the tissues. And when they are in the tissues, you know, in the tissues we don't have macrophages who would uh, eat them. So what would happen? this will produce an inflammatory reaction in this place. It depends on the place. It could be the kidneys, it could be uh, a knee, it could be any tissue. Let's suppose that it's in the kidney. This, um, <coughs> this reaction in the kidney then will promote the triggering of our complement system. You know, the complement system is the second defense system of our body. So we can compare it to something like this. The antibodies, like the T cells and the, B and the B cells, are what we call the police. And the complement is what we call the military. So you know, the, the police, is, they come and they try to convince you, that's all. But when the military come, they don't try to convince you. They just come and, <laughs> and destroy everything. So that's why it's very important to avoid the triggering of the complement, because when it is uh, when it is already <coughs> shooted, no, not shooted, triggered, then you cannot stop it anymore. Okay, so the complement, in reality, the complement is an, an enzymatic cascade. It is nine steps when you get the final effect. Okay, so 
<coughs> we have these immune complexes stuck in the tissues of the kidneys so the complement is triggered uh, when the complement comes they will try to destroy these immune complexes but since they are stuck in the tissue they will not recognize who is who what is what it's like the military they won't know who's who so they will come and they shoot everybody it doesn't matter if you are police too they will kill you anyway so that will happen they will destroy the immune complexes but they will also destroy the tissue so this is what we call the autoimmune diseases the auto aggression diseases so what do we do well in orthodox medicines what we do is only again to inhibit the body so what we do is to give uh, immune suppressant medicines we give anti-inflammatory medicines we we give antibiotic medicine etc but of course this will not produce any benefit a benefit benefit sorry any benefit to the patient they will they will die anyway because this disease is what we call the glomerulonephritis right so what the enzymes would do okay the enzymes have a very important uh, role avoiding this problem in the first place enzymes avoid the formation of these immune complexes at least the big ones they split it they make it smaller the second thing is that enzymes have the ability to take all these stuck uh, uh, immune complexes in the tissue they put it again back in the in the bloodstream so when they get back into the bloodstream then the macrophages can come and destroy it in the normal way okay so this is very important. We have had, we have made many studies with glomerulonephritic patients, and we have had very good results. And patients have recovered, and normally they could die in maybe in five days, four days. It depends on the severity of the cases. But we have done it many, many times. Now, if we stop and think, how many uh, autoimmune diseases you know already? Many, like uh, arthritis, like lupus erythematosus, like pancreatitis pancreatitis, how do you say, pancreatitis, and um, <coughs> alopecia, <coughs> um, what else, <coughs> there are so many things that are autoimmune diseases, and there are many diseases that are not in the beginning autoimmune diseases, for example, you can have an hepatitis, that it's a viral disease, viral disease, but you know the chronic inflammation can also produce an autoimmune diseases, AIDS patients do not die because of AIDS, but they die because of autoimmune diseases that are produced after they get this infection. The body attacks itself. The thyroiditis is also an autoimmune disease. There are many, many immune diseases. For example, the shingles, the problem of the post herpetic neuralgia is not because of the, herp the herpes, but it's an autoimmune disease too. So there are many, many, many things that can be um, <coughs> helped by the enzymes okay <coughs> including for example MS now it's believed to be an autoimmune disease and many many other uh, uh, problems are now believed to be caused by autoimmune aggression okay now since I know you are a dentist so I think most of you should be <laughs> uh, enzymes we have made some studies using enzymes as not, well, we call it anti-inflammatory because that's the word to understand ourselves. But the truth is that enzymes are promoters of inflammation. What I mean is that uh, you know the steps of inflammation are four, and the last one is the repair of the tissue and then the recovery of the function of the tissue, okay? So when you take an enzyme, what you are doing is to accelerating this process. That means that you will get uh, the healing uh, sooner. But remember, enzymes are not inhibitors, are not inflammatories. They are promoters of inflammation. And we have had done uh, some studies uh, with the patients who have the extractions of tooth. And what we have seen is that we get a, discover, a recovery in half of the time. If you, if you give the patients the enzymes before he has the uh, tooth extraction, you can, have, uh, you can have the patient recover in half of the time. We have done this many, many times, not only with, uh, with problems of uh, surgery, but also with, with people that are dedicated to sports. For example, um, we have uh, sport injuries, 
and we, when we give the patients the enzymes after the injury is done, it, it recovers in half of the time. But we thought that it also would be good to give the patients uh, the enzymes before they get uh, this uh, injury, this sport injury. So we give the patient, we gave the patient, for example, three days before the competition, the sport competition, and then the recovery, the recovery was in the third uh, time, in the third part of the time, than than that was normally recovered. So that's what you can do for your patient. You can give the patient th uh, three days before the two destructions, the enzymes, and then you get the surgery, and then you keep on taking the enzymes, and the recovery will be in the third part of the time. Yes, sir. Yes, well, uh, I can recommend, there are so many, as I told you, there are uh, 3,000 and more enzymes. But uh, if we want to speak about commercial's name, well, we can do it. I don't know if you, if you know some of commercial's name. Do you know already some of them or not? Yes? Bobenzyme is the most famous one, okay. <laughs> Yes, well, <laughs> let me tell you, the bovine sign is supposed to be color with natural color. If you take, let me tell you what the test is. If you take a glass of water and then you put the, the tablet inside, then it will psh, I did it. and it's didn't, yellow. didn't happen. It's something yellow, it's not natural color. But didn't disappear, I mean, it, you didn't get released the color when you put it in glass. Yes, sir, you can only it white. Okay. Well, this uh, the remaining. It could be not uh, not artificial color. It could be uh, uh, well. The word in English I don't understand it. I cannot tell it. I cannot tell you. But it's like it's part of the excipient and the enteric uh, enteric. Uh, how do you say enteric uh, coat coating coating? Okay. But the bovine sign does not. At least it's supposed to not contain any uh, artificial color. Well, well, I got from the forum the e names and it does. It does. Yeah. Okay, I will ask. And it's not okay, I will have to ask, but because it is supposed not to have any artificial color. Well, well, then if you want, we can talk about the bovine sign specifically. Would you like? Okay. Right, write it down. I will write it down. <laughs> well, the bovine sign is registered in the states, but only as a natural supplement, digestive uh, health. But it has already some INDs for other diseases. Okay, Bob and Sign. In Europe, there are also many other names, such as Mulsal, such as Bob and Mugu, such as Block and Sign, and they are specifically designed for different diseases. But in, in the States, you only have this one, so. <laughs> Where to get it? Uh, in the States? Uh, in Arizona, <laughs> I don't remember the, the number, but I can give it to you later. If you give me your phone number, I can send it to you by fax, so I can call you and tell you, okay? Because I don't remember right now. Okay. Tomorrow. Well, I don't have the phone number here. I mean, I didn't bring it, but I can, I can send it to you or send it to Dr. Alana, all right? And you can share it, okay? okay. Is the body supposed to make these enzymes? Well, yes, but let me tell you what happens. When you get sick, you will need uh, an increasing quantity, an increasing amount of enzymes. So that's what happens. We don't have the enough ability to produce in this amount. Why not feed more free amino acids? Make, them, you know, make the enzymes. Okay, yes, but again, we don't have enough. I mean, we don't have the capacity to have. And here you, ha you are having what you need. I mean, the cascade, enzymatic cascade, you will have to have uh, and the discovery here is that uh, uh, an, an enzymatic, an artificial, well, a capit, a natural capit uh, okay, enzymatic cascade has been done. So you are taking uh, the enzymatic cascade already. So you, have, you don't have to wait until you have this reaction, this whole reaction. That's the good thing. Okay. Why not feed people more enzymes so that they keep their immune system up way ahead of time? Of course, of course, that's very good. But if you have not enzymes, I'm talking about amino acids, so that the body maintains it. I think we're all short of amino acids. 
Yes, well, but amino acids, you know, amino acids are very now, they are being, they are trying to classify them as drugs. So, that's a problem. Enzymes do not. They tell you this, it's an old uh, digestive health, that's all. That's the way thing, they don't have so much problem. <laughs> yes, sir? One of the criticisms of uh, whole enzyme uh, therapy by, by Mallory is that uh, the enzymes being protein will themselves be, will be digested and broken down and, and not absorbed as a whole molecule. Uh, what, what's the balance in that question? I mean, do they get broken down? Do they get digested? To what extent do they get absorbed whole? Yes, well, we have, to do, we have to do many studies to demonstrate this. And one is that the enzymes have been uh, rheologically marked. Is that right? Rheologically marked. Uh, so we could see, so we could see the absorption. So we saw the absorption. But then they told us, okay, we accept that they are absorbed. But we don't, absorb, we don't accept that they are not triturated, as you said. So what we do is we make another studies, and we have demonstrated that, of course, they are um, uh, they are in 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 intact. Yeah. They are actually intact. Of course, uh, only a part of it are absorbed. I mean, only uh, twenty five percent of the enzymes are absorbed. Not uh, that's why they are given in large doses. For example, if you take ten tablets, it's like if you have taken only one tablet and a half, because it's only twenty five percent. Yes, but it is that is recognized that we only absorb. Uh, intact, 25 percent of them. Yes. Another one. Another question. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm really not very familiar with current uh, alternative cancer therapies, but I know that uh, the Kelly program and, and Nick Gonzalez in New York uses uh, a tremendous amount of digestive enzymes as part of the therapy. Uh, are, are you finding that that is helpful as well? Yes, I know. I can tell you in, uh, in two words what the enzymes do for uh, cancer treatment, if you want. Okay, would you like? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, to tell you, we have to remember just the two things that I, the first thing that I tell you. Enzymes are anti, uh, not anti, but fibrinolytic. Fibrinolytic. Okay? They are fibrinolytic. And if you remember, one of the features of the cancer cells is that they have a fibrin uh, membrane. And this the fibrin membrane is abnormally 15 times thicker than the normal uh, thickness, okay? So this makes the cancer cells uh, unrecognized. I mean, the, uh, the immune system cells do not recognize them because of this fibrin covering. They are not recognized. And the other thing is that this fibrin makes the cancer cells sticky, sticky. So whenever they go, they can stick. And if they stick, they get stuck, they can produce another cancer growth. All right? OK. So if the enzymes have this renolytic effect, that means they will destroy this uh, 15 times thicker uh, membrane. So in the first place, the the, these uh, cancer cells will be recognized by our immune system. So it would be much easier to be destroyed normally. The other thing is that enzymes, uh, I mean that the, without this stickiness, the, ends, the, the cancer cells will not be stuck. We, we have done some research on this. We have seen that people, for example, women who take enzymes after surgery, they will have 92% and not having any more uh, metastasis. Okay, because the enzymes are both metastasis because no more stickiness in the cancer cells. But enzymes are also capable of producing, uh, increase the production of uh, mediators, such as cytokines and the release of TNF, the tumor's necrosis factor. So this is well done. I mean, this is well recognized, uh, the production of TNF. Okay. That's how they do to help patient, cancer patients. But in Europe, what they use, in Mexico too, what we use is not a bovine sign, but bovine moves. Instead of using bob enzyme, we use bob and moves. Can you write that down? Yes. Won't the NES uh, uh, enzymes uh, accomplish the same thing? I, excuse me? Won't NES, N-E-S-S, accomplish the same thing as bob enzyme? NES, NES?
I can tell you. Do you get this in the States of the world in the same place in the Wolfenstein? Well, in the States, this is not uh, approved by the FDA. Bowen time is it's okay. You can get it anywhere in the States. But Bowen moves, you cannot. But you can get it from here. Yeah. Yes, you can get it in Mexico at the pharmacy. And you can get it important in the States if you get a prescription, no problem. I sent it to many patients in the States. Without a prescription, it seems the FDA has no problems. And this one is more of a general uh, enzyme? Could be treating a general condition? Bob enzyme? No, the Wolverine. Oh, no, on the contrary. Bob enzyme is, is this for all kinds of inflammation. It doesn't matter if it's uh, chronic or acute. And bovin mobus is specifically for cancer patients or very severe uh, autoimmune conditions such as um, um, soster patients, such as AIDS patients, and so on. We have done some research on AIDS patients, and we have had at least, uh, for example, an increase in the CD4 uh, cells. We have seen that if the patient has at least 200 CD cells, we can increase the number. If they have less than 200, it is very, very hard to get it back up. And we have also seen that they don't get, uh, or, or at least they have only a few uh, infectious diseases because, you know, enzymes avoid much of the uh, infectious diseases. Also, the enzymes avoid the rising of a cancer. You know, many AIDS patients have Carposi or other kind of cancers, so it helps to avoid the cancer. And we have seen also that patients with which are HIV positive do not uh, get the AIDS uh, full flesh, how do you say? Blood uh, blown uh, uh, <laughs> symptoms. Okay, so it helps. It helps many things. Well, I, what I think is that we have to be uh, we have to be open-minded. That we have to see the patient as a whole. You, I think, I'm sure you already know this, and uh, uh, also to be sure that the patient has the normal levels of the coenzymes. Because if you give a patient, for example, bovine enzyme, bovine mousse, but if the patient has a deficiency in certain vitamin or mineral or uh, amino acid or whatever, then maybe you will not get the results that I'm telling you. So that's what is very important. Yes, sir? Protocol for MS. For MS? Okay. I can give you a protocol for MS. Uh, using a uh, bovine enzyme, uh, I, what I recommend is to give the patients 10 tablets three times a day for at least uh, at least three weeks. And then you can reduce the amount, the quantity, the quantity to five, three times a day. Now, here is very important to tell you that in the beginning, some patients uh, apparently get worse. And the reason is very simple. For example, if I got a patient with MS or arthritis or whatever, remember that all these immune complexes are stuck within the tissues, okay? So when you take the enzymes, what the enzymes will do is to take them away, to take them back to the bloodstream. And when they get back to the bloodstream, they will produce also reaction from the body. So the patients will have fever, so the patients will have um, pains and so on. You know, remember that the release of the cytokines and other leukines will make you feel uh, the broken body and so on. So that's why patients will tell you, doctor, now I feel worse than in the beginning. So you have to tell the patient that they have to be patient and they have to be strong and wait just a few more days and they will again feel, ba feel better. Okay. And after these three weeks of 10, then five, uh, three times a day. Uh, let me tell you here that we have seen that most patients with MS, with MS have a deficiency of essential fatty acids. So it's good to make a measurement of the essential fatty acids. Uh, most of them are lucky in are lack in in the in the plan uh, essential fatty acids. So in this case, we, what we recommend is to give even in primrose oil uh, 500 milligrams uh, three times a day, at least three times a day. But some of them, they are the less. Some of them. Uh, are lack uh, are less they have less uh, the fish uh, essential fatty acids so in that case what we give is the EPA you know the EPA EPA eicosampetanoic acid EPA that's the name EPA or they know like omega omega 
omega-6, okay? Also the same amount, the same uh, dose, 500 milligrams three times a day. And the mineral that is low in most of the MS patients is selenium, selenium. So what we recommend is to give selenium at least uh, 200 micrograms, 200 micrograms a day. But if you have the opportunity to make a, uh, a specific measurement, it is better because you can give the exact dose. I have had patients that need uh, 600 micrograms a day, but there are certain patients that only need five, uh, 50 micrograms a day. Okay, so this is good. What about B12 injections? B12? Okay. Yes, well, B12 is very good. We have used it too. Uh, because you know uh, this uh, helps to recover again the fibrin of the not the fibrin but the cells of the of the nerve. Yes, of course. But if you don't uh, if you don't uh, destroy the cause and the 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 cause is the immune complexes because the immune complexes are destroying these this uh, uh, membrane of the nerves. Okay. If you give vitamin B twelve but don't give enzymes, then the patients will not uh, get uh, will not get uh, a steady improvement. There are, there are, yes. Yeah. It is demonstrated that there are uh, so immune complexes in the, the fiber. Sort of what sort of antibodies, the immunoglobulins? Well, I can tell you. No, no, no. It is, uh, the, the immune complexes are produced by the two. By the, we, we're, they suppose it's an, uh, an chronic inflammation uh, that can be produced by many other things, such as electromagnetic fields, such as metals in the body, such as particles of other things. Yeah, but my question was, what, what sort of subtype of antibody is, is this in this inflammation in myelin basic protein? You know? Well, yes, but uh, I don't know the name right now. But I no, it's not any H. It's only a, immune complexes are all together, everything together, because you can have at the same time an immune globulin along with a particle of a metal, along with a particle of a fungus or a particle of a bacteria or, or whatever. It's all together. It's not only an, an immune globulin. Okay. Yes, sir. Is uh, flax oil the uh, equivalent of primrose oil, flaxseed oil? Yes, it's, it's good, but the best one is even in primrose oil because it's the most uh, absorbable uh, uh, containing uh, these uh, essential fatty acids. Yes, sir. You were going to ask something? Yeah, uh, I heard that vitamin B12 is because it comes from the cigar because it speeds up cell division. That's why some people say, hold on, hold on. Well, let me tell you, there are the. Any Excess of anything can be dangerous, anything. So that's not good. But if you give the right up dose, I'm sure it's good for the What's patient. The right dose? It depends on the age, it depends on the weight. Let me tell you, when we are speaking about the amino acids and minerals and nutrients, we have to see the whole orchestra, the whole thing, because they, have, they, they are interdependent on each other. So, for example, if you know about uh, the mercury, if you have mercury, mercury is antagonist of zinc and magnesium. So mercury can produce in a patient which is prone to epilepsy and a sizer, all right? But in another patient, it can produce dermatitis or psoriasis. Same thing with vitamin E, supposedly it's not really recommended, even it's anti-inflammatory, because it produces like a sheeting around the cancer cell. It's not too. No, no, no. <coughs> that, that's what the orthodox says. <laughs> but don't believe in. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, vitamin E is contraindicated only in cases, for example, in cancer patients who have what we call the receptor, the hormone receptors. When you have hormone receptors, that means that you can have a growth of your tumor if you take for, uh, whatever is a precursor, precursor, right? precursor of the hormones. So in a, in a patient with breast cancer, it is contraindicated to take vitamin E, in this case, specifically. But that doesn't mean that in all cases, uh, vitamin E is contraindicated. Okay. So no, no. You have to. What you have to do is to see to see the whole picture, the old vitamins, minerals, metals, and so on. Yes, sir. When you 
give the B12, do you make a distinction between the cyanomethylcobalamin versus the hydroxycobalamin form? Well, I prefer the last one. The hydroxy. Yes, the first one has, cyan how do you say, cyanuro, cyanuro. So in, if you have a high, a high dose, then you can produce problems. That's what happens with this uh, lab trail, also contains the same thing. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just want to uh, call out the importance of the EAV, electric acupuncture by Vogue. Doug Lieber had a case of an MS patient in Wyoming who had an excessive of selenium. And so here's where it's important to use. Here's where you can go into the body and ask a question and get an answer you can't get any other place. And he had to eliminate her selenium, and she got well with the dentist dreams. Of course, I do. I do accept and I do agree with him. I have patients uh, with having a high level of copper. This is not common because now many of the plumbering is made of copper, of copper. But in the past, it was not the case. So it depends. Sometimes they have higher levels, sometimes they have lower levels. But we should not be, uh, how you say, um, deceived by what we have as preconceptions. So we have to be sure what is happening with the patient. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to thank you very much for the informative talk. I hope this is the start of many exchanges in all fairness of medicine between America and your wonderful country of Mexico. And we enjoy being here. And uh, I think that you've done a marvelous job today. So uh, we've all learned something. And it's, it's hard to always learn something every day. Thank you again. Okay. Uh, we're going to break for lunch. Coffee break. Coffee break or coffee break, whatever kind of break, refreshment break. Please visit the exhibitors and don't forget the American Academy of Biological Book Table. We made all those charts for you. Take a look at them. They're all new. It's been a year and a half since we've had them. So uh, take a look at them. Thanks. Okay. I hope you didn't get it. Okay. How do you do it?